Now, when we talk about credit from transactions, we also need to talk about the topic of bad and doubtful debts. Now, it's inevitable that some debts are not going to be paid, and we call those uh, debts going bad. And this is you know, called a bad and doubtful debts expense, um, and in the income statements, it's allocated as a finance expense. Now, what happens when we as accountants have to account for bad debt? Let's, let's go through an example. An account to M. Jones of $500 is declared bad, so that means they have been declared bankrupt. In this particular instance, um, and this happens quite a lot, that maybe only 20%, or in this case 20% of the debt it can be paid. So what happens? We have to come up with a general journal entry, for, which looks as, a, as this. On the date, we've incurred the debt. So let's just do some calculation here. $500 were outstanding. We received 20% of that. So 20% of 500 is 100. So we received the 100, which the remainder, which is 400, we then have to classify as bad debt. And that is an expense to the business. And the original debt to M. Jones of $500 um, obviously doesn't exist. We're never going to get it. Therefore, we must credit the accounts receivable controlled account to M. Jones. When we get to the end of the accounting period, um, there's something else we must do. I've already told you that customers don't pay for various reasons. And that happens from a day-to-day -day basis, and sometimes that is determined on what the uh, economic conditions are like. In any instance, what we must do, we must estimate what portion of our accounts receivable or not might not be collected. That's usually based on past experiences and also expectations from an economic perspective. So if, if things are going bad in the economy, therefore we might expect our level of bad debts based on the past experience to go up. Therefore, we have to make a provision. The reason we do this is that, it is that we must attempt to match potential bad debts to the revenue earned in that accounting, accounting period. So accountants follow the doctrine of conservatism, which means they are conservative. Therefore, if they think that an asset value might be less or profit might be less, they must make some adjustment. And we're going to make an adjustment called provision for doubtful debts. But to come back to the matching, a debt which could be classed as doubtful and provide a potential expense, we must make that attempt to match um, the potential expense in that accounting period to, the, to, to that corresponding revenue. So if a sale is made in one accounting period and there's a potential for that sale to go bad or any potential sales to go bad, then the provision for doubtful debts creates a expense, a doubtful debts expense in that particular accounting period to ensure that the matching occurs. In order to make a provision, we have to write a general journal entry. In this instance, we debit bad, bad, and, bad and doubtful debts expense. It's making us up $250, and we create this uh, account, provision for doubtful debts, and I'll show you in a moment where it gets um, allocated to on the balance sheet. If we want to decrease the provision, what we need to do, we need to go the opposite way, and we're going to create a provision for doubtful debts and debit bad and doubtful debts expense. There'll be a example that I will show you later in a future clip to show you exactly the dynamics of how creating provision works and how it affects the bad and doubtful debts expense account and also the accounts receivable control account. This is how it would look in the balance sheet in the current asset section. So you can see that's just a little excerpt. So you'd also have, you would have a heading here, current assets. Uh, you'd have other current assets like cash at bank, 
inventory control account and so forth but this is the important bit um, accounts receivable control in this account receivable control account is $100,000 the provision or the allowance for bad debts is 5000 therefore the net that we're going to receive is $95,000 but as accountants we want to understate rather than overstate so realistically we're going to receive $95,000 and not the total $100,000 that we have in our accounts receivable control account that's it on the theory side as I said I will um, present another clip to account for the provision for, for doubtful debts which will explain it in a lot more detail thanks for listening principle.